Eia mākou ka ohana E hana nei ke ia Mahele hana noho i No ke aloha noho i I'm a photographer working in Hawaii on a project called Day in the Life of Hawaii. Uh, my partner and I are, are putting together something for Hawaii's 25th anniversary of state. Hawaii. Operator, may I help Hawaii. you? And uh, what we're going to do is invite 50 photographers out here uh, on December 2nd and have United you States calling to Mr. Garrett Ludwig. I'm trying to reach uh, Garrett Ludwig, who's a photographer with a visa agency. I don't know what's going on Thank you, China. All lines are busy. We're cold, and your call will be answered. Okay, this is what it used to be like to live in Hawaii. Uh, run that by me again. You guys are our first welcoming city, so we're new at this. By the time Eddie Adams comes, we might have it under control. Welcome to Hawaii. Welcome to your party. Thank you. Nice to meet you. I'm David. David. That's Doug. That's Mike. Everybody have a good flight. If I got bad jet lag. Hawaii's first view. Next year marks Hawaii's 25th year as a state. And as part of the Silver Jubilee celebration, Governor George Arroyo... Preparations for a day in the life of Hawaii photo shoot are it's underway. It's a picture book put together day using the best work from the world's 50 best photographers. They'll be swarming all over the state December the Good 2nd. Good evening, it's Aloha Friday. I like my own assistant to help me. Let him do that. I do that. I'm not going to be involved in that. Because I know my limitations, man. I'm, I'm completely incapable of doing that kind of thing and shooting. When my partner David Cohen and I first thought of doing a day in the life of Hawaii, we were excited by the idea of bringing 50 of the best photojournalists from all over the world and getting them to apply their talents to one place in the space of only one day. All right, so that's the starting point for the first thing in the morning. Bob, we're next. We got it. The men and women that we invited to work on the project spend their lives on the road alone, competing with each other. Every week you can see their photographs on the cover of Time and Newsweek, Life and National Geographic, Perry Match and Stern. But this time they'd all be working together to see if they could capture a single Hawaiian day on film. Do you have the number of my contact? I don't have any number. Uh, all right, the guy I'm shooting is called Angel Aranio. And his number, I have yeah. in contact with him. We knew that there was an incredible amount of risk involved in what we were doing, and that despite all of our planning and all of our months of preparation, a lot of things could still go wrong. And as the day approached, we began to wonder if we really could say something significant about Hawaii. None of us knew what was going to happen over the course of the next 24 hours. December 2nd and about 23 days away from Christmas. You know what this is? Uh, what is? Oh, yes, I do. Today is uh -huh. a day in the life of Hawaii. And I would imagine that if someone was going to take a picture at exactly 12.01 of like the moon or something, mm -hmm. the first photographs have already been taken. Anyway, throughout the state, except unless they're going to fly over Niihau, <laughs> uh, there are photographers from all over the world who are capturing this day 
in celebration next year of the 25th anniversary of statehood of Hawaii, and that'll come out next year. But remember, this morning and today is the day all those pictures are taken. Hello there, it's Aloha Friday, 6.07. I'm Ron Jacobs, and this is Hawaii News. Charlie can just barely tell us about what's happening out there in traffic. What do you have? Well, there are no accidents to worry about at the moment, but it is busy on the H1 freeway, especially around the H1, H2 interchange to Waimalu. Once again, we urge you to drive defensively on this Aloha Friday morning. was overwhelmed with the sense that uh, everybody else there had done a lot more to be where they were at that time than I had. Sometimes you think that the birth of a baby picture has become overused and a photographic cliche and all that, but uh, to witness it is really something else. She had a beautiful little boy, about uh, 1.35, something like that, in the morning. And it was, it was just an overwhelming experience. Okay. On the other hand, I'm not sure whether the, the, um, the effect of just being there was, uh, was more striking than, than just a still image of that would be. Now you got to think of a name for you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone happy? If we really take out time, I can use up an hour, two hours of school. <laughs> okay, when you take a look at what you think of this time, I'll your fingers you got red fingernail polish on there oh no <laughs> that's it look at me you got the prettiest eyes of any child i've ever seen in my life wow
your phone a little more to your right. I had at first been told that I was not allowed to go on this, with them on the boat because apparently there's a, a law of the sea and a superstition that says that women bring bad luck. I went down to meet the captain. He had already said no. I went down to meet the captain and I convinced him this was very important. I would only bring them good luck. And when I got on board, I understood that maybe superstition was not the real problem, but that they didn't have any adequate toilet facilities on board. And so, uh, in, in order, but they did not tell me of that. This one is special on purpose. Everybody says. <laughs> When we first came up with the idea of doing a project about Hawaii, a day in the life of Hawaii, trying to show what happens on a typical day in Hawaii, um, I think that what we were trying to do was make a series of photographs that were different than what anyone had ever seen before. I think there have been lots of, of projects and books about what it's like to visit Hawaii. What we were looking for was what it was like to live there, what it was like for the people of Hawaii on a day-to-day -day basis, people waking up, kids going to school, that sort of thing. Those are the hardest pictures to make, and, and it, we always talk about them as extraordinary pictures of ordinary events. Um, it's not very hard to make a photograph of something which is bizarre or strange, but I think it, it, it's very hard to take the ordinary and show it in, in a new light. You come here every day? Every day. Every day Since what time? Since how many years? Eight. Eight years Eight. every day? Every day. Seven days a week. When it rains, I'm not here. angewöhnt haben, nur noch auf das Spektakuläre zu achten. Zu zeigen, wie gut sie selber fotografieren können und haben vergessen, eigentlich, dass sie zeigen wollten oder sollten, wie sie etwas bewegt haben. days like this, Aaron has to go out in this monstrous surf with a 20-pound camera and a plexiglass housing. He has to stick his camera through the side of the wave, take his picture, and then duck back under before he gets run over by the surfboard. His pictures make it look so easy.
possible sign. Nihi Hau is an island that is inhabited by a family called the Robinsons, who bought it in 1840 from King Kamehameha. And it consists of the Robinson family and about 200 people who work for them. Not only do they own the island of Nihi Hau, which is 10 miles off the west coast of Kauai, but they own most of Kauai as well. Outsiders are not allowed on the island. The last real outsider that got on the island was a Japanese pilot who crashed there in 1941. And after he shot one of the islanders three times with a machine gun, the islander picked him up and threw him against the wall and crushed him. So I knew I was in for problems. I got to the helicopter pad this morning, and we had arranged to have a helicopter take us over to Nihi Hau Island. So we did some overflight. Since we were not allowed to go on the island, and our, in, our request for an invitation had been denied, I got the helicopter pad this morning. I discovered that the Robinsons had put the word out. And the helicopter pilot immediately said, well, there's no way I can even take you anywhere near the island. We have to live here. And uh, so haven't they worked with that? One phone call and the arrangements were made? That's right. OK. Well, good luck. What are you going to do now? I'm going to go and uh, take some pictures of people getting married. How does that relate to the Robinsons? Uh, it's something that I can do, as opposed to something that I can't do. Lanai is, is a company town. It's the plantation. It's the Dole Pineapple Company. And there's a, an early morning call for all the workers that are go, going to go out into the fields. And this is just as the first uh, light of day is breaking. Lanai is, is the untouched island. It's the one where there is no tourism, where nothing is happening, where it's, it's only one thing, growing pineapples. So it, it's totally different than the rest of the islands. And I'm really pleased that I got to see that. I mean, that's, everyone told me there, this is what the islands were like 50 years ago. So I got to go back in time. And that's what Lanai is, back in time. really unsurpassed landscape. You'd have to put it on par with any of the great sites on Earth. And that sort of has a religious aspect of its own, to see something that's that stupendous. Can you estimate how big the uh, blast is going to be like? Uh, I don't want to be too wide. I don't want to be too narrow on it. 
Well, you're going to be limited by the valley anyway. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, fairly, fairly large in, in the valley from where we can see it here. But it's, 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 a blast of fire it's like where this slope, this nice green slope is, is that correct? Uh, see where the lighter green grass is? Right. Okay, go about uh, halfway up. I'll tell you what, I'm going to set my camera. I'll let you look through it, and uh, I'll look forward for your comments. Okay. I think what really excited a lot of the photographers working on the project was that they got to try something new. They got to stretch themselves. And if it didn't always work out, it was okay. Yeah. This is way too tight. On December 2nd, the Army arranged to detonate two surplus 1,000-pound bombs for Israeli photographer Alan Reininger. <laughs> you need to raise them for you to see. Sometimes things just don't work the way uh, one hopes they will. Life is somewhat less glamorous than uh, we would like it to be. Geez, those are the real thing. I made 80 years old, that was in my birthday, yeah? For July, <laughs> we came in. My birthday in June 28, after a few days, he wrote, me and Johnny Pacheco, Johnny Pacheco, 75 years old, and me 80. Johnny roped the head, I roped one leg, but my rubber came all outside. Still I roped him. And you don't forget those, those stories. Don't forget. Uh, you worry, I feel you worry about something. Um, worry is the thing that make you forget, that make you old. That's good right there. Oh boy, pretty boy. The, all these things are important, you know. We've got, we have uh, six people on Maui. We've got uh, an ash, two National Geographic photographers. Yeah. One of them is their underwater photographer, the guy that does all the white sharks. Well, thanks a lot again. Keep an eye out. Bye. We shot the on the backside of Mulakini, a couple divers myself, the backside drops down almost sheerly to about 2,500 feet. You swim in and you see the edge of the edge of the crater, and then you begin to sink down. And the water turns from uh, I don't know, light blue to a darker blue-black and almost to a blue-white and then the lip drops off straight and I looked down we had some lights and another diver a girl named Beth Gleason just hung there like a, a spider on a wall that was wonderful inside of the crater is a different case there's kind of a light sandy bottom that slopes up from an, about an 80 foot drop off and it's full of uh, lemon butterfly fish you feed the butterfly fish and they come around you in these vast schools just like butterflies. But they're quite voracious and they'll bite anything that moves. Poked my head inside a hole and there are two more eels and one of the eels came just like that to the camera. Kind of touched me, touched the dome of the camera. And I waited a while and the eel swam out of the hole and came around the corner. And there was a little fish called a Labrides cleaner wrasse. It's a kind of an ultramarine blue and a yellow. And what they do is they pick parasites from all the other fish. In the deeper water, there's a lot of interesting things going on. It's again like a studio situation. It's not a great coral paradise, but it's a, it's a kind of an underwater studio. Sort of blue walls, a little bit of coral here and there, and unbelievably beautiful fish. My assignment was uh, to do a story on the sugar industry 
in the uh, Big Island of Hawaii, um, centering in on a company that was going out of business called uh, Puna, Puna Sugar Corporation. You could spend an entire day and never see a person. Uh, the harvesting is done by machines. Uh, the workers get up in the morning, drive the trucks, get the machines. You never see people. So you, I really couldn't get a sense of, of the community. There wasn't a community. Um, or, or couldn't really get a sense that the community was dying um, because they were working very hard, and next year when it's over, it's over, and they all go their separate ways. So there's no sense of, there are no signs that this was the last harvest, that when this crop is harvested, there will be no further crops that they've lost to the cheap labor in Asia and things. And I said I wanted to do the women of Hawaii. That's my specialty. Uh -huh. My specialty is sex and violence. You know, women in war. And uh, uh, what happened is, you know, like I was telling Renette the other day, that uh, they said this is the closest thing they could give me is cows. It's uh, photo number 23 at the moment. I'm trying to get some more photos of Mike Waltz. You know, you asked about what the feeling was 
about Hawaii, and I was thinking that I bet almost everybody who comes up who had contact with Hawaiians is going to say that this is a place that's full of love. There's a tremendous amount of warmth. I don't even know if if all of us can accept the kind of love that comes out of this place because we're almost suspicious of it. Everybody asks, what's the picture you remember? We were in an area right above a waterfall, and Angel had jumped over the waterfall. We see a 270-pound guy jump into a waterfall. He makes quite a splash, and so I was interested in the waterfall, and I was laying on top of the waterfall, shooting down, and I got wrapped up in the graphics of the waterfall, and then a few minutes later, I looked around, and there was Angel. He climbed back up the waterfall, and he was laying in the water with his whole body underwater, but just slightly underwater, and just his face showing with water coming over it. That, that's the image that I remember. Okay, Angel, go for it. Yeah. I feel good in, in being part of a project that's bigger than myself, bigger than anything I could possibly do by myself. I just hope I was able to get the feeling that I got out of the day, because the day was an exciting day for me. There's sort of a tradition of passing on the torch to the next generation of photographer. Um, in addition to the famous photographers from around the world and the photographers from Hawaii, we always try to select one or two young photographers. Um, I think all of us, when we were getting started, um, felt like someone had sort of taken us under their wing, and it, it helped us at, at a point where perhaps we were good photographers but didn't know anything about how to promote ourselves. And we had a young photographer in Hawaii named Carl Ganter, who reminded us of all of, of ourselves when we were getting started. If the other 50 or so photographers put as much effort into this project as Carl Ganter, the book should be something. Ganter is the youngest of the photographers. He's just 18 and a freshman at Northwestern. He's already made a name for himself as having real ability with a camera. The early morning sale at the downtown Honolulu Fish Market was not the first stop for Ganter. His day had started a lot earlier, about 2.30, at the offices of Dean Witter Reynolds, where Ganter prepared to document on film the brokerage firm as it prepared for the financial markets to open in New York. After Dean Witter and the fish market, Ganter went to Farrington High School, where he spent most of the morning. One of his stops here was Walt Delaney's drama class. We have today, you know, in Hawaii, they're doing something very remarkable because they're doing a day in the life of Hawaii. The rest of Ganter's shooting schedule included several hours in the afternoon at Punahou School and then a variety of assignments in the evening, all the way up to midnight. So Ganter will spend 24 hours with cameras around his neck. By the time the clock strikes 12, he says he will have taken as many as 30 rolls of film, 36 exposures per roll. That's more than a 1,000 pictures. With so many older, more experienced photographers taking part in this project, Ganter will be happy if just one of his pictures is among the 300 or so to be selected for the book, A Day in the Life of Hawaii. The way I figured, I'll, have, I'll be able to have lunch about 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> what happened to your wedding, Jody? Well, it's possible that they had a bad fight this morning about uh, who was wearing what, and who was sitting on the bride's side and who was on the groom's side. And they may have called the whole thing off, but I hope not. Oh, come in, stop. 
up for a picture? Would you have him stop? Do you speak English? I don't think it's no. Oh, would you ask him to, to come out to just step up for one picture? May, may we take your photograph? Yes, oh good. Tell her she's very beautiful. <laughs> Oh, that's my picture. Great. Alrighty. Okay. Good. Now you got any lift your chin just a little bit. That's good. Now do you have any teeth? There you go. I thought so. That's good. That's great. Okay, good. Good. That's great. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, I see. I can see two eyes now. Oh no. More than 4 million people visit Hawaii every year, but most of these visitors spend their time in places like Waikiki, and they never really get to see the real Hawaii. We sent photographer Kent Koberstein to a small farm on the island of Kauai to photograph the illegal sport of cockfighting. He spent the day with Pantaloon, an 84-year-old Filipino. Can you, come, can you come this way by the bird? Yeah. Space Lab from uh, the forward payload bay camera, and there's a gorgeous limb of the daylit Earth uh, off behind the uh, Space Lab module. No, I think things are about as you expect. The first day was We'd heard that the Space Shuttle Columbia was scheduled to pass directly over Hawaii on the afternoon of December 2nd. Michael Evans, who's President Reagan's personal photographer, asked the White House to see if Mission Commander John Young and his crew would take a picture of Hawaii, and if they'd also pose for a low-gravity self-portrait as they passed 150 miles over the islands. Just an amazing vehicle up here, sitting inside the uh, orbit of Columbia. Houston, uh, Columbia. Over. Columbia, this is Houston. Uh, good to see you guys. You look good. Uh, we're delighted to be here, and we certainly appreciate uh, the messages uh, from the various uh, heads of state and ministers of those countries. I think it is important that uh, we cooperate internationally, and not only in space, but everywhere else and we're anxiously awaiting to 
take it back to the Earth so we can see just exactly what scientific and technical accomplishments have been achieved and report them. It's uh, been an exciting uh, 10 days, and we uh, think we've learned a whole lot about how to live, operate, and work in space 24 hours a day for 10 days straight. I have not stopped. I have not, no. I mean, I, I had a McDonald's literally on the, uh, literally as I was running. Uh, I don't, I can't, I, I didn't shoot lots of different subjects, but everything I had required all the time in the world. Okay, that looks great. Kurt, just a little bit to your right, if you can, please. We got a shadow. No, I mean, just move a little bit, a little closer to your mother. Oh, that's sweet. That's good. <laughs> Everybody's been incredibly friendly. I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect, you know, people that's to be this. Well, I guess so. Nice yeah, weather, nice really, people. Really. Why am I not living here? Uh, <laughs> I don't think. Probably couldn't, probably couldn't get a job here. Let's see, on this roll of film, we have the sand burn, and we have, you're on the same roll with some pretty heavy duty body surfers. Oh, whoa, whoa, what do you think about crazy. that? Hey. <laughs> darker for the other. How many torch fishermen are there? I mean, are there a dozen? Are there a hundred? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, what? A <laughs> hundred. Over a hundred. But, not but, you're, but you're the best, right? <laughs> not too many with this type of thing. Okay. <laughs> The good photographer is the photographer who can take pictures while walking backwards. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Boy, it got dark fast. The minute is gone. I'm right on the on the verge of not making it here. Okay, don't look at me. Just just look down for the fish. I can't resist a just a nice nice portrait. Okay, now George, if you come just look right at me from there. That's great. Great. Okay, doke.
results that I saw in about a year. Yeah. And so I entered my first contest, which was here, and of 10 women, I took third. I felt like I somehow had fallen into my own trap that I set for all the other photographers of thinking, my God, I've only got a day, and there's so many things I have to do. This, these projects have a very curious feeling for me, which is, um, it's almost like uh, putting a bunch of elements together, then stepping back and watching what happens. Nobody feels unusual right. that no. you're going to have a Chinese friend, a Japanese friend, a Cambodian friend, a Samoan friend, a Fijian friend, and you might all get together and do something very American, like going to McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, I'm so fascinated by it that I'm, I'll be back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really, really am. But I don't believe the people are. Mm -hmm. They're really nice. And, you know, although this is America, you know, it just seems funny, it's like another country, yet this is America. I was, I was really ready to die, and it was the middle of the day, and we'd been up all night, and we ran over to the zoo, and, and um, I saw all these, these, these older people watching the giraffes, and they had these really enwrapped expressions on their faces, so I was kind of photographing them, and they got embarrassed and said, why are you photographing me? So I moved over and asked them to turn around and face me. So we have all these giraffes sort of looking at them, but they're looking at that, and they're all in Hawaiian shirts. They were from Thistle, Thistlewood, Utah. And, and after I took that picture, I really felt like I could go home. Uh, well, my assignment was to go to Leper Colony in Kalapapa. In a, in a business that we're in, the word unique is never used, and Kalapapa is unique. I spent three years in Vietnam. I've been all over the world, and nothing scares me anymore. I've been there, I've seen it all. And uh, I was going to take a picture at precisely midnight out on the very tip of this peninsula where they dropped the people off and they had to swim for their lives. They've got a little lighthouse. And I thought, this would be real nice. So I have a 1201 picture. Well, the guy that was going to take me out didn't show up. So I threw my camera gear over my shoulder and I started walking. There are no lights in Kalapapa. There's no moon. It's slightly overcast. The wind is blowing. 
I've got this tiny little flashlight that I use to see my camera gear, and I'm hiking along through the graveyards. There must be thousands of people buried there, and the sisters have already warned me that there's ghosts all over the place. So I start hiking. By the time I get there, I'm scared so much. I know I'm not going to get any pictures, and I didn't get any pictures. But as I'm coming back, I hear all these little noises, and I know they're coming to get me. And then, you know, in Vietnam, you know they're going to get you. But in Kalapapa, they're coming to get me. By the time then, I'm moving real fast. My camera gear, I don't care, right? I'm running. And a bunch of deer come out of the forest and take me home. Well, the best picture I took, actually, was of uh, something I'd never seen before. It was just somebody, I, I went to a Polynesian music class at a high school, and uh, it was a ukulele session. And this was unusual, but what was more unusual is somebody was blowing a uh, conch, a big shell, and you know, he'd wait for like 25 minutes before it was his turn, and he'd pick up the thing and put it and it'd cover his head. And uh, it was the best picture of the day for me, which gives you some idea of what kind of day I had. Was it disappointment to you? Uh, not a disappointment so much as a tragedy. Photojournalists are a strange group of people, and, and you can, I think, sum them up with a number of different things. One is, photojournalism is the greatest um, form of delayed a adolescence ever invented, um, which means that that's both good and bad. These are people who never settled down and maybe never will settle down, um, but they also retain a lot of the good things about being young. There they won't come out.
A Day in the Life of Hawaii is brought to you by Eastman Kodak Company, makers of Kodak Film, because time goes by.